Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to First Presbyterian Church and to our first Hymn Sing Sunday. My name is Randy Freeling. I'm the director of music. I'd like to read a couple of letters from church members complaining about the song selection and music in the church. The first letter. I am no music scholar, but I feel I know appropriate church music when I hear it. Last Sunday's new hymn, if you can call it that, sounded like a sentimental love ballad. If you insist on exposing us to rubbish like this in God's house, don't be surprised if many of the faithful look for a new place to worship. The hymns we grew up with are all we need. That was written in 1863. <laughs> about just as I am. <laughs> Letter number two. What is wrong with the inspiring hymns with which we grew up? When I go to church, it is to worship God, not to be distracted with learning a new hymn. Last Sunday's was extremely unnerving. The tune was unsingable, and the new harmonies were quite distorted written in 1890, about what a friend we have in Jesus. <laughs> so we will begin our hymn sing with hymn number 839, Blessed Assurance. This hymn was written by Fanny Crosby, who wrote more than 8,000 hymns and gospel songs. We will sing verses 1 and 3 of 839. So I have practiced all 853 hymns in the Glory to God hymnal, and now it's your turn to tell me a number you'd like to sing. <laughs> Not all at once. <laughs> Any favorites? Six hundred and eighty-eight. Oh, I don't know that one. <laughs> <laughs> Hymn number 688, we will sing verse 1 and 5. Spirit of God, descend upon my heart.
Another number. What number? Two hundred and sixty nine. And we will sing verse one and three. number 321 the church is one foundation verses one and five and next week you get to pick all the numbers so get ready for the numbers we'll do this the whole month of September so then I can't get in trouble for the music selection <laughs> everyone. It is so wonderful to see the family of God gathered together to worship. I'm so glad that you are here and I would like to thank a few people before we begin. I would like to of course like to thank you Randy for digging up those 1800 commentaries. How interesting, huh? I'm not sure whether I'm to be using this microphone or this other one. The head mic. Okay. I've got to get it to stay on my ear, so hopefully it will. I would also like to thank the choir. Isn't it wonderful to have them back with us? So, yay. And I would also like to thank Emily Lewis, who is serving as my liturgist today. So, Emily, thank you for being here for us all. Uh, just a couple of announcements. I would like to remind you that today, following this worship service, 
In addition to having our fellowship time, if you like, grab a cup of coffee and come on in the chapel. We're going to be having, once again, let's talk about it. Come with your questions that you've always wanted to ask about faith, life, whatever. This is not scripted. It's not a lecture. It's a, a discussion with one another as we look at questions we have about life and our belief system. So I hope that you will join us after the service. So I, I look forward to seeing you then. And now, as has been a tradition throughout the ages, it's always good to share the peace of Christ with one another. And we started to do this with the COVID wave. That means we're not going to get up and kiss anybody. So if you will, turn and let's say, peace be with you and also with you. doing the call to worship, which is responsive, printed in your bulletin. <clears throat> we look at this world, focusing on the pain and confusion, the fears and the hatred which seem to abound. For what can we help? We wait breathlessly for the goodness of creation to be made manifest in all the world, for this is the promise of God. God is always with us. Guiding, rescuing, healing, restoring us. Get ready, dear friends. The promises of God are true. Lord, quiet our spirits and open our hearts. Bring us hope and peace. Amen. And now for the opening prayer, which we will all read together. God of God surprises, surprises, we come, we come here, here from, from the weariness, weariness of the week. Of the week. From various trials, triumphs, from fears and doubts, open our hearts to receive your surprising message of hope for us and all your people. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.
be seated. God's love has been poured into our hearts through the gift of the Holy Spirit. The proof of God's amazing love is this. While we were sinners, Christ died for us. Because we have faith in him, we dare to approach God in confidence. My friends, let us confess our sins before God and before one another in our unison prayer of confession, followed by a time for our own personal silent prayer as well. Will you please join me? We are such a diverse group of people. Some of us are at the top of our game, and others just struggle to get through each day. Yet you draw us here, where we will find friendship, peace, and hope, not only for our lives right now, but for all the times to come. Stand us up again, O God. Dust us off and put us back on the pathways of service and reconciliation. Warm our hearts with your love. Lift our spirits with your power. For we ask these things in the name of Jesus, our Savior. Amen. Let us take just a few moments for our own prayer as well. My dear friends, who is in a position to condemn? Only Christ. And Christ died for us. Christ rose for us. Christ reigns in power for us. Anyone who is in Christ is a new creation. The old life is gone and the new life has begun. Believe the good news, my friends. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Is that better? 
When we gather together, one of the beauties is that we can join together in prayer. The power of prayer, I think, is that constant mystery that we know only belongs in the realm of God. And we, my friends, have been invited to come alongside of God's Holy Spirit to pray not only for ourselves and our family and friends, but also for people that we don't even really know. And so this is a privilege that we come together to pray. I know this is a praying congregation. I have felt it. I have seen the power of prayer and the results it has manifested within this body of faith. And I continue to ask you to please pray for those. We know that following a hurricane, it is a long process of recovery. And so even though we were spared any kind of damage, we know that there are those that were in the direct path of Hurricane Adalia, even some of our neighbors to the west. And so I ask you to please continue to lift them up in your prayers, as we know that this will be a long process of recovery for them. I would like to thank, in particular, Nancy Sullivan, who brings to us our prayer chain. And Nancy, thank you so much for that ministry. We appreciate knowing as you bring prayer requests to her, then she shares them with the rest of us via email. And that allows us to continue to pray for one another. So Nancy, thank you for that ministry. I would like to praise God for some of the wonderful reports that we have gotten. I believe if you have received and read your prayer chain, you know that Elizabeth Long has had some wonderful news about her recovery. And we thank God for these answered prayers on her behalf. I also would like to thank God for being with Joyce Whitlock as she is now back home. We continue to pray for Carell Myers. But I need to ask you, just this morning, I received news that Sue Tui just had a stroke this morning Aww. and was being taken to the hospital. So please pray for her. Pray for all those who love her and care about her. We know that God is already with her, but that is an immediate prayer concern. So I know every one of us brought here prayers in our heart, and we will lift those up to the Lord as well. So will you please join me in the prayers of the people of God? Let us pray. Lord, we do thank you for the privilege of being able to unite our hearts in prayer alongside of your Holy Spirit. And we do lift up to you our prayers of thanksgiving as well as our prayers of concern. In particular, Lord, we pray that you will hold Sue closely and her family and her friends. Help them to know your presence and that you are our creator, that you are looking after her. We pray that you will be with the doctors and the nurses and technicians, all who look after her well-being, and that you will guide them and comfort them all in this case of crisis. Lord, be with those who are continuing to recover from natural disasters. We think of the hurricane because it was our most recent natural disaster, but we know that there are disasters taking place all over this globe. Be with those people, Lord. Comfort those who are mourning the loss of loved ones. Help them to also know your presence and that you will never, ever leave us. We pray, Lord, for people who are in positions of leadership. We pray for the President of this United States, our Vice President, our Congress, all who govern throughout this land. Speak to them with your still small voice, Lord. Guide them in their decision making. Help them to make decisions as you would have them do on behalf of your people everywhere. And Lord, we pray for peace. We pray for peace not only in this country, but we also think of those who are in war-torn nations such as Ukraine. Be with them, Lord. We do pray that you will move those who are in positions to make a change, that they will cease this war. Lord, we pray all of these things and even dare to bring to you the prayers that each of us brought with us this day 
that we lift up to you in <coughs> silence now, Lord. Oh, hear our prayers. We thank you, dear God, that we can come to you any time of the day, any day of the week, that you want to hear from us. And so, Lord, may we be diligent in our prayer life. For we pray all of this with the hope and thanksgiving that we have in Jesus Christ, the one who taught us how to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. My friends, the earth and all it contains belongs to the Lord, the world and all who dwell within it. It is always the joy of our hearts that we are able to give back to the Lord a portion of what is his. Let us now give of our tithes and our offerings. refer to your bulletins and join me in our unison prayer 
of dedication. Lord, receive our gifts and our lives. Calls all these blessings to work for you in this world, which you have loaned to us for safekeeping. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning is taken from one of the epistles, which means letter. It is from 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 through 9, and I ask you to hear now the word of the Lord. Blessed be God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy, he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who are being protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, even if now for a little while you have had to suffer various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, being more precious than gold, that though perishable, is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Although you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with an indescribable joy. For you are receiving the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. This ends our reading of God's holy word. May God add to our understanding and our application of its truth in each of our lives. Will you join me in a prayer for preparation? Lord, we do thank you for preserving these words for us to hear this day. And we pray now that the words of my mouth and that the meditations and thoughts of all of our hearts and our minds will be acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, you are our strength and our Redeemer. Amen and amen. Well, this particular letter of First Peter is what is known as a circular letter. It was a letter written to a group of people who lived in five regions, a very large swath of territory as the new church was being planted all around Asia Minor. This particular letter is said to be given to the Chris persecuted Christians in Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia, five different regions. And this letter was to give them the hope that they have in this new Christian faith. Well, Paul to, uh, Peter talks about, although some believe that this has Paul's theology throughout this first Peter letter, it is discussed that we have an inheritance kept for us in heaven. Now, I'm looking at you and I'm thinking probably in this congregation we have a few of you who have received an inheritance in your lifetime. I know that I have. I have received uh, items that were precious to my grandparents, <clears throat> and because I remember seeing them in their home, those items are precious 
to me and to my family as well. Sometimes the inheritance is financial. Sometimes the inheritance is land. Sometimes it's in the form of things that we receive. Watches, necklaces, things that were precious to our loved ones. Well, Peter describes this as an inheritance more precious than gold. So what exactly is that saying to us? Let's think about it. What does gold mean for us? For those of us who have a wedding band on our finger, more than likely it is made from gold because gold represents precious metal, something that is long lasting, something that is of great value. So when 1 Peter talks about we have an inheritance that is more precious than gold, it means this really must be something in our lives. Christians, though, we will probably all agree, value other things more than just things of financial worth. We believe that there is always something greater. I think we see this. We've all seen the commercial, not the commercials, the news broadcast. When the news media arrives on the scene where a tornado has just wiped out a community, and as they're walking through the rubble of the town, they will oftentimes interview someone who has just lost their home and everything in it. And what do they say? These are only things. What we have is more precious than any of this. We still have our life. We know that there are things more precious than gold, don't we? We know that our faith is to be counted among those things that is more precious than physical things, material things, financial things, that having things that last forever are much more valuable. And First, First Peter is bringing that out to us. And he does it, doesn't he, in such a beautiful way. He says faith is our hope and the inheritance that God prepared for us. Verse 3 of this particular section is almost like the doxology that we just sang for the offertory, praise God from whom all blessings flow. In verse 3, if you take a look at it, it says, praise be given to God of his greatness, his mercy, and everything so beautiful that God has done in our lives. What God has done, he goes on to describe, which is truly the foundation of our Christian faith. He begins with the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So often we will say those words, but do we really think about what we are proclaiming when we talk about how that is a part of our faith? The resurrection of Jesus is unique to the Christian faith. So many other faiths in the world People are constantly striving to be good enough for the God that they worship. But our God loves us so much that he did all the work for us. Our God made us beautifully and wonderfully and then went on and knew that we were going to sin because we were given choice, but has chosen to die a sacrificial death for our behalf. God did it all. He cleaned us all up and makes us holy to stand before him as a child of God. And not only that then, we know that because Jesus, who sacrificed for us, was dead and buried, what do we proclaim? That on the third day he was raised from the dead and sits on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. This is what we Christians proclaim that resurrection is a part of our faith and the foundation of what we believe. And that because of God's mercy, we too, even though we will die in this physical death, we too will be raised again and will live with our Father in heaven forever. This is what we proclaim. This is our hope. As a pastor in the faith, I have officiated many funerals, many 
memorial services. And I can tell you there is quite a difference between a Christian funeral and memorial. Yes, people are sad, but at the same time, because of the hope, the assurance that we have that this life is not everything, there is something beyond this life. This hope, this is what we have. And Peter calls it a living hope. It's not just a one-time thing. It's a constantly renewed hope that God gives us in this life. It never perishes, he says. It never spoils. It never fades. God is always renewing this hope in our lives. And it is indicative and pointing us to the inheritance that we have kept for us in heaven. But let's get real now. We know that in life there are trials. We can almost relate to the people that received this letter because they were being persecuted. Their homes were being destroyed. Their family members were being murdered. They were being beaten. It was a very difficult time for these people. And here is Peter writing to them saying, have hope, you should have a living hope because faith is more valuable than gold. We are facing trials too. We may not be beaten by our government in this nation anyway, but we have gone through a pandemic that was a, a trial in itself. And for many who have experienced the effects of long COVID, we know that they too continue to suffer from that pandemic. We know that we have gone through recessions. We have seen, and I have heard from other families, where all of their, their savings disappeared. We have gone through job layoffs, reorganizations in the workplace. I hear from people who experience relationship problems, even those, maybe even especially those closest to us, a spouse, a son, or daughter, those kinds of troubles. We worry and we live in fear because of these kinds of things in our life. Michael and I have three children. One of them is a daughter. When I was in seminary in Louisville, our daughter, you would know where our apartment was because our daughter would go out and collect rocks. And she would bring these rocks back and line them up outside of the door of our apartment. So I, people would say, where do you live? And I'd say, look for the pile of rocks outside the door. That's our apartment. Our daughter loves rocks. We would go to toy stores. And where most kids would go to the different kinds of construction things or tinker toys, Olivia would go to the vat of rocks and she would just let her fingers flow through the rocks and lift them up and look at the different colors. So for her birthday, her seventh birthday, we got her this. <laughs> you may not know what this is. It is called a rock tumbler. Now this rock tumbler is very interesting because it comes complete with sand and grit and all you need to do is add the raw rocks and water. And then what you do is you put them all in this little container, you put it in the rock tumbler and then you plug it in. you smiling. You know, you know what this is like. And after 24 hours of that, <laughs> you take it and you open the lid and you look to see if anything has happened to your ordinary rocks, which not much had happened to our ordinary rocks. So we were instructed to put it back in the rock tumbler 
and plug it back in. Well, according to the instructions, after another week, you are supposed to open it again and check your rocks. So we suggested to our daughter, perhaps we should put the rock tumbler in the garage. <laughs> and if you can imagine, even in the garage, you can still hear the rock tumbler out there. And this went on and on and on. Yes, it was a trial. <laughs> but we found that over time, and we're not talking one week, we're talking months, that ordinary rock was worn down to look something like this, a smooth rock, the grit, the water, the sand, brushing against it, being tumbled with the other rocks, knocking it, knocking it off, bringing it to its smoothness. You then could take polish. And they even were so kind when they sold us the rock tumbler to give us polish and jewelry making tools <laughs> so that you could wear your newly beautiful, shiny rock jewelry. It really is amazing how rocks that are so rough-hewn and ugly through the process of things brushing and rubbing and bumping into them and, and really causing great violence to them can be made to look beautiful and shiny. If you look at the cover of your bulletin that shows a creek bed with the water rushing over it, Anyone who has ever gone hiking through the woods and come across a, a creek, if you see where water goes over it over and over again, you see how beautiful and smooth and the colors are revealed. I believe that what Paul or, Paul or Peter was talking about in 1 Peter was that we too will go through various trials in our life, that we too are going to be bumped and scratched and hurt, and that we are being refined in this process. Peter says, but the treasures of God have been held in store for us. We who are in life being constantly churned and refined and bumped by the trials, because we have this faith, this living hope, this undefiled faith that cannot be spoiled, it cannot fade, it will be kept for us, in an inheritance for us in heaven. My friends, I pray that as you go through the trials of life today or tomorrow or next year, whatever it may be, because we all go through them, that we will remember that God is using this to refine us so that we may, in the end, come to this marvelous inheritance kept for us by God in heaven. Will you join me in a prayer? Lord, we do thank you for this living hope that we all have, we all share, this gift that has been given to us by God, our Father in heaven. We thank you, Lord, that even as we are tossed and shoved and hurt in this process, as we are persecuted by life, that we too may have hope and faith, that we know that this life is only a part of the story, a part of the picture, that you are guiding us, polishing us, that you have something prepared for each of us that is more precious than gold. We thank you for this, and we pray this with joy in our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen.
dear friends, I know it can be difficult, but look around. God has placed us in a community and has given us the gifts, the tools to support and lift one another up. So let us do this. Let us be about this because we represent that living hope, that assurance that God has given to us of the inheritance to come. So with that hope in our lives, let us go out this day praising God in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.